Uh, we got the smartest listeners. Uh, 744, uh, let's go ahead into the KUAM News Zoom room where we have the president of the Mayor's Council of Guam, uh, Mayor Jesse Alley. Good morning, Mayor. Good morning. Hey, are the mayors uh, and their staff covered by this vaccine mandate issued by the governor via executive order late Friday afternoon? Uh, well, we're, we're waiting to, to find out if we are. Uh, we did ask the question because uh, we, you know, I, we can't really say that we're really under the executive branch. Um, so we're waiting. We're waiting to find out. Uh, it was it was a post. The question was posed to them. So hopefully we'll hear today and we'll let our staff know. So you I don't we don't I know that not all our staff are, are uh, have received the vaccine. So that that'll be important. But I don't know how many. <laughs> I don't know how many are not vaccinated. So you mean to tell me that they came out with a huge executive order mandating vaccination for executive branch employees and no one gave you guys a heads up? Yeah, that's correct. So we, we did, uh, we had our last uh, memorial, uh, liberation memorial ceremony on Saturday at Seguian and uh, uh, that was, you know, our executive director and I, we, we discussed that and it was not something that we were, uh, we weren't sure. We, I wasn't positive, so I can't, I can't come out and tell the, you know, I can't tell the council that, that they were part of that, uh, that order. So we're, we're waiting on clarification and as soon as we get it, we'll, uh, you know, I don't know. Was Brie was it? Was it in her Instagram video where she had said that she hoped that other um, private sector companies and other government agencies would follow her mandate? She said in her uh, Instagram video um, that she's hoping that the other two branches of government and the private sector okay. will follow her. So, Mayor, let me just reverse and ask you a different question. So, if you guys are not included in the governor's vaccine mandate. Would you then mandate vaccination for the mayors and their staff and follow the Magahaga's lead? Well, you know what's important for me, Chris, are the are, are people's lives and their families because we we've worked through the pandemic since the very beginning. And that would be that would definitely be the, the biggest issue for me is to make sure that our staff, you know, are are healthy and safe. And they all have families, so they end up having to go home. And uh, so, for sure, I would encourage the council to the rest of the council to to be vaccinated. Those that are not, I do know that they're you know they all have their their various reasons for not getting the vaccine or not wanting to be vaccinated. But uh, the bottom line for us and the mayor's council is that we mm-hmm. we are considered frontliners. We've been uh, we continue to do the work. Uh, of COVID and uh, it would be best for, for everyone to really just be vaccinated so that they're safe. I, I um, did want to, I was, I'm on your, your website and you click under about the MCOG. It says yeah. that although not a line department or agency by name, the mayor's council of Guam is an entity of the government of Guam under the executive branch of government. With regards to the day-to-day operations or any event of natural or man-made emergency or disaster operations, collect the collaboration and coordination protocols exist between the Mayor's Council of Guam and the Executive Branch. However, unlike directors, deputy directors, and administrators of the Executive Branch, the mayors and vice mayors of Guam do not answer to the governor or lieutenant governor of Guam. But that first line I read um, does say that it's an entity. Under well, the even in, and of and Guam. whatever the case may be, there there's still no. Uh, there was no procedure as to how we were going to execute the order, right? Mm-hmm. So if if we we are covered under it, and our employees are not vaccinated, how? What are the guidelines? How do we? How do we? You know, th- there's no there's no playbook. How? What do we do? Right? Do we just make our own form? Do we? What do we do? I mean, it's easy. It's common sense. But I mean, for the entire government of Guam, what's the plan? So I, as far as I know, we're not a part of the plan, but we're getting clarification. And if we are, then of course, you know, we'll ask for, for a form that we have to submit uh, or whatever it is that we have to submit to, you know, to be um, in compliance with the, uh, with the order. What type but of... as far as I know, and as far as our executive director knows, we're, you know, we haven't heard anything other than what, uh, what you guys have shared with us. Uh, 
Mayor, what type of discipline would you consider for those who do not get vaccinated? Because it says in the EO that uh, they'll be subject to disciplinary action. Well, I mean, if we're governed by the EO, then it would be whatever the e, whatever the governor says. But uh, we don't know. Was it safe? I mean, would I would I impose anything on any of our our staff? I mean, you know, that's something that I'd have to consider. That's something we'd have to consider as a council. It's it's not a you know I don't make the decision arbitrarily. But uh, again, we we're not we're not sure. And that's that's the other thing is so what are the ramifications? What happens if the employee does not uh, comply? Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, if we are part of that order, then uh, perhaps we're it's in an email coming or something. Oh, uh, Mayor Alec, hold on because I think Bree has the EO up. It just says that um, if you don't get the vaccination and you don't comply with the weekly COVID nineteen testing, that. Um, Employee shall be subject to disciplinary procedures, which may include disciplinary action. So, um, are we talking suspension? I mean, what are we talking well, about? I, yeah, it's vague, right? So, nobody I'm not knows. Sure. I, don't, I don't know. It doesn't well, say. Yeah. well, don't worry, they're coming on to explain the whole thing in a couple minutes. Just kidding, they're not. <laughs> <laughs> so, you, well, should you should know, you should know soon. When we know, I'll let you know. I got jokes. Who who do you have to wait and hear from? From the governor's office or from Angel? Or well, yeah, we'll have to hear from the governor's office. Whether or not it's applicable the to the MCRG. Right. Okay. How many employees are we are we talking about, Mayor? Because uh, you know we've got over eighty percent of our adult population that has been vaccinated, which was the gold standard that we were striving for. Right. But now apparently we have about that's 230. not thirty. Two hundred thirty employees. So how many of them have not received the vaccine? I don't know, Chris. I started the conversation saying I don't know because <laughs> I know you're going to ask. <laughs> and then you could just ask them that? I mean, it's not a, like a HIPAA thing? Yeah. Oh, I, well, see, those are the... I, 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 I can't answer that. I don't know what, what our rights are there. I mean, what, what, you know, what is within, the, within our uh, authority as, as employers. So I, I'd have to find out. Because we had Daphne on, and no, she was like, she was punching up. Uh, Friday, I didn't really know, so and none of us know, so we're we're just kind of waiting on, on how we're going to proceed. Uh, yeah, because when we had Daphne on, she was like, oh, let me punch it up, and I guess she had some kind of spreadsheet that showed like who was vaccinated, who wasn't, um, mm. and public health collates this data. So I'm not even sure. Uh, it's just because you know, being in media before the pandemic, HIPAA was like the shield. It was, oh no, can't HIPAA can't talk about anything HIPAA, and so I'm not sure what, um, or if it even applies nowadays. I don't know. Well, you know, I mean, I remember that. I mean, HIPAA. I don't even know. People don't even know what the what the acronym is stood for. I think sometimes Health so Information Privacy just, Protection Act. I want to say. Wait, what I mean is, like, you know, we just used it, and just right. because we could use it, right? right. Yeah. So, yeah. but. Uh, in fact, they were saying that they couldn't. Um, it's funny because at the beginning of the pandemic, they they said that they couldn't tell us what villages people who had COVID were in because of HIPAA. Remember that, Bree? Mm -hmm. When they yeah. said they oh, couldn't, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. But now you can find out how people are, whether or not they're vaccinated, and that's not a HIPAA concern. Interesting. <laughs> I mean, guys, I'm fully vaccinated, by the way. I volunteer the info. <laughs> I think most of us are, you know, at our at our council. Most of us have volunteered that information because we want to know. I mean, we're always around each other, right. so uh, yeah. <laughs> at least in our offices, right? We all know. We That's why I'm wondering what, when you come out with an EO like this. I mean, is there are there uh, like a ton of executive branch employees who aren't vaccinated, or is it just a few, or was it just like a way for the governor to flex and be in line with her Democratic counterparts in the states? Because mm -hmm. we don't know. Because she just put it out, you know, didn't tell anybody. With the media and everyone else all day at all these events on Friday, didn't say a word. She got a great poker face, I guess. Um, and then dropped it, what, like five something, close to six o'clock on Friday. Huge, huge, this is huge information. A mandate, a vaccination mandate for executive, it's huge. You don't do that. You don't put that out on a piece of paper. You come and you address the people, I think. I would think anyway. It's going to be interesting to see how this is going to impact the Guam Department of Education, who's getting ready to <laughs> reopen Open, yeah, this week. Y yeah, yeah, so good luck, John. Well, um, 
Anyway, I did want to follow up on the whole All Rise, Rise um, uh, Act. Act. Uh, I don't have the checks. I haven't signed any checks. <laughs> are you <laughs> getting, are, are the mayors seeing people coming in to get the mayor's verification? I mean, we oh yeah, we we've never really stopped. I mean, even when even when the the, the announcement came that we don't no longer needed the verification, our residents were still you know right, right. they were still prudent and, well, and gave us a call because no one yeah. can believe anything the government says anymore. It's just better to be covered on your end. You know, there's just so oh, much all confusion the time. Yeah, all the, the time. <laughs> I mean, and for those, I I always you know I used to complain about everyone making copies and copies and copies of these verifications. It's like. For me, if I don't need to make a copy, I'd rather not, right? But bless their hearts for those people that made all those copies in the past because they don't have they didn't have to come back. They could just use their copies for, for their application. So sometimes, you know, the old ways are good ways. <laughs> do you um do you know anything about the executive order that's gonna streamline the uh process that's supposed to be coming out? Have you heard anything like Sabrina Matanani? Oh, how would I know? I didn't even know. Son of a gun. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but I just figured I'd ask. Maybe, you know, it's a miracle uh, that, you you know, the mayor's council of Guam might know something in uh, public health emergency. I don't know. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> uh, no. No, I have to be careful, you know, you guys at KOAM, you guys like to, you guys are very creative. With it is what it is, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what about COVID differential pay? Are they going to uh, still uh, target it for Friday? <laughs> That's, uh, yeah, they, they paid half uh, <laughs> last week or two weeks ago, and then, and then the other half is supposed to come uh, this coming week. Supposed to come. I never, I don't know, I don't want to say supposed to come. We'll just cancel that last sentence <laughs> right yeah i know that that angel was like it's august 13th right but yeah, yeah. just like it was supposed to be that whatever it was last week it didn't it didn't come out we all had to wait for i don't know yeah. um yeah. And so it didn't come out they transferred the money but you know it wasn't made available yeah. until a couple yeah. of days later so i guess we just kind of have to wait and see what's going to happen again yeah. this time around well, I mean, there's the, the, the there's a bright side for at least 14 villages. Uh, we all did receive the 14 of us received um, our letters of award for the uh, after school program. <laughs> I mean, the the summer school program for next summer. Uh, so for those of us that that applied for that grant, uh, you know, we we received that award letter. Uh, the, we haven't received the money yet, but we received the award letter. So that that was coming out of the lieutenant governor's office or the uh, Guam State Clearinghouse. So I know I made that announcement on KOM like many moons ago. And so we're, we're at least happy that we're gonna, we're gonna get that. A lot of that money too is, you know, prepares the, the facilities for, for the mayors to conduct their programs. So that, that's a good thing for all of us. Uh, the other half of that program, uh, like the after school program, uh, that's coming out of, uh, I guess, another, another grant or an, and another funding source. So we haven't heard about that yet. But that's a good thing. There's 14, and and there was initially, I think, when I reported it out, there was seven. There were seven uh, villages, but uh, in the end, uh, 14 uh, submitted. So that's a good thing. And of course, we're preparing for for the beginning of school, the start of school. So mayors are busy um, uh, look, looking after bus shelters and and the routes that that children take. Uh, contrary to some what some other people think that we don't care about these bus shelters and we don't care about the the roadways i mean uh, these are our, our children in our villages and sometimes i think before people um open their mouths they need to talk to us or perhaps even lend a helping hand so and we're very fortunate that we've had we have sister squadrons and sister village we have the sister village programs with the navy and with with anderson because they're they've been very helpful and uh, and not only that, we have other um, uh, nonprofits that that help us, and organizations, humanitarian organizations that help us with these bus shelters. So, uh, regardless of who has direct um, uh, supervision or jurisdiction over these bus shelters, the mayors always always take 
a, a lead role in it and always are interested in making sure that, that our children are safe. So well, that's that's definitely has been on our minds the last uh, couple of weeks and, and, and coming into this week. Mm-hmm. And of course, that just rolls right into uh, one of our bigger topics of last week, which is the, you know, keeping the children safe as they walk to the bus stops and, and the bus shelters and as they walk to schools for some of us who have have uh, schools within the within the village proper. So, you know, we're, that's, that's, that's on our plate this week. Right on, Mayor. Well, we appreciate uh, your time uh, this morning. I know you've got a lot to do, uh, you know, figuring out what you got to do with this EO and uh, the return yeah. to school. So appreciate the time you gave us this morning. Thank you, too. Have yeah, a good Steph, week. Right on. I'll follow yeah. up with you later on whether or not this is a, uh, applicable to MCOD. Oh, okay. All right. right on. At uh, 8 o'clock, we're going to take just a super, super quick break, and we're coming back with the link on KUAM-TV next. We got your six.